In this lab, we will be learning a separation technique called chromatography. Chromatography separates different substances based on how attracted they are to different solvents. That attraction is based on polarity. In column chromatography, a glass tube is packed with a substance like silica. A mixture is placed at the top and a solvent is poured in. As the solvent moves slowly through the tube, it carries the different parts of the substance at different rates, causing a mixture to separate. In thin layer chromatography, a plate covered with silica, a thin layer of silica, is placed into a beaker with a small amount of solvent, which is absorbed up the silica. As the solvent passes over the mixture, the mixture is separated based on how polar each part of that mixture is. You might be seeing the theme here. In this lab, we're going to be doing paper chromatography in order to separate inks, which are actually usually a mixture of multiple pigments in order to get an exact color. For the discussion section, you'll create a table and determine the RF value of each pigment for each solvent. That's going to be how far that substance travels with the solvent. Then you'll identify the polarity of each solvent that we use. We'll be using three of them. I'll show you how to determine the RF value at the end of this video. For our materials, we'll need to start with distilled water. We'll need ethanol and we'll need acetone. Those will be our three solvents. So those will be what you want to look into and look up on Google to try and figure out what the polarity of each one is. We'll need three samples of ink. You can use a mixture of pens or any kind of marker. Just include one washable marker. I'll have a variety of pens and markers available, but if you want to test your own to see how the mixture separates, you're more than welcome to. Then you'll need nine strips of chromatography paper. You'll need three 600 milliliter beakers, several pencils, a ruler, and some masking tape. The steps of our procedure go as follows. You'll select three ink samples to use for the chromatography. For each chromatography paper, use a pencil to mark a line straight across one centimeter from the end. It must be pencil because the pencil lead will not interact with any of the solvents, so you'll still be able to see it after we do this experiment. Label three of the papers water, three of them acetone, and the other three ethanol. So we'll be using three papers for each solvent. Put a dot of ink on each chromatography paper in the center of the line that you drew. Set the paper in an empty beaker with a pencil across it so you can figure out where you need to tape the paper to the pencil so that it's just barely above the bottom of the beaker. We want it just barely touching that bottom so that it'll just be in a small pool of solvent. And you'll see that in a minute. Next, tape the paper to the pencil and make sure it's at the proper height. Again, the paper should be just above the bottom of the beaker or barely touching the bottom. You may have to adjust your paper and your tape a few times to get it exactly right. Next, label each beaker with the solvent that will go in it. Once all three pencils and beakers are set up, pour the correct solvent into each beaker. One beaker should be for acetone, one beaker should be for ethanol, and one beaker should be for water. Place the chromatography paper into each solvent. The solvent will steadily be absorbed by the paper, traveling upwards. If the ink is able to dissolve in the solvent, it will travel with the solvent. However, if the pigment of the ink is more attracted to the paper than the solvent, it will rise more slowly and you'll see the different pigments begin to separate. Let the solvents rise for 15 minutes. Notice how the colors on some of the inks begin to separate and how the ink doesn't travel in all of the solvents. Some of the inks just don't dissolve in some of the solvents. If the solvent reaches halfway up the chromatography paper before the 15 minutes is up, go ahead and pull it out. And then just mark the highest line that the solvent reached with a pencil and then let them dry. To measure the RF value, we will make a ratio of how far each pigment traveled divided by how far the solvent traveled. That'll make more sense when we go over the calculations. In my example, notice that the blue pigment traveled 6 centimeters, the red pigment traveled 5.2 centimeters, and the yellow pigment traveled 3.4 centimeters. 
Let's determine our RF values for those colors. So I have an example drawing of a chromatography paper like the one in the lab video. And we're going to use this to figure out our RF values for each color of this pigment. So this was black ink. It got divided into a yellow section, a red section, and a blue section. So the first thing I need to do is I need to make sure that I clearly identify each section. So I'm going to do that here. I'm just going to draw a little line showing me, and I see I've got red and blue making purple here and then right here so there's my there's my three pigments I really only have those three so I'm gonna mark those clearly with with a little straight edge so I'm gonna put that here and so then I would just draw a line across this draw a line across this and here and then I take those measurements, and I've already got those measurements from before. The blue pigment traveled 6 centimeters. The red pigment traveled 5.4, was it? 5.2, 5.2 centimeters. And the yellow pigment, that was 3.4. And then my solvent line was right there. It was right with the blue pigment. So the blue pigment and the solvent traveled all the way together. And so in order to figure out my, my RF values for each of these pigments, I'm going to just take the distance that the pigment traveled divided by the distance that the solvent traveled. So it's as easy as that. So for my yellow pigment, I take that 3.4 divided by 6.0, and that's going to give me 0.5 seven. I'm just going to round this to two decimal places. That'll be close enough. And so that's my RF value for that yellow pigment. I could use that to identify that pigment in various circumstances. Now, when I do the RF value of my red pigment, I get a value of 0 0.87. And then finally, the blue one, well, it traveled six centimeters and the solvent traveled six centimeters. So that one should be a no brainer. It's just going to be six divided by six, which will be 1.00. So that's the RF value there. So if I was doing a separation of these inks, I could do a column chromatography where I could set up this ink and run a solvent through it. And as that solvent passed through, the blue would separate and I would be able to look at it and see it has an RF value of one. So I'd be able to test it for its purity. Now, another circumstance where I might need to know this RF value is in a lot of organic chemistry. Uh, we have to do certain reactions, and we need to know when those reactions are done, and a lot of organic compounds are totally colorless. And so we won't see that the reaction is done. So the only way we know is by its RF value in a thin plate chromatography. And so you'll see that if you take higher level chemistry courses, you'll actually see that fairly commonly. Now that we have those values, we want to make a table for our discussion section for our lab. And so I've got the one solvent and the one pigment, so I'm going to give that a name. So I've got the water for the black marker, and I'm just going to make a table. I want a table for each pigment and their RF values. So I'm just going to go into insert, do a little table. And then I've got my color, and I've got my RF value. So I've got my yellow, I've got my red, and I've got my blue. And then I just put those values in, and that's really all I need for the discussion section. I just need to do this for each solvent and each color. So I should have nine total tables, but the calculations aren't that rigorous. It shouldn't take you too long to put these together. 